it's pizza day. So unfortunately, I didn't grow up liking tomato sauce. So naturally, I ate a lot of white pizza. These kids love pizza, and white pizza is just pizza without the tomato sauce. Pretty simple. But one quick search on YouTube for white pizzas, and to me, I just feel like they're not getting the love that they deserve. There's so much potential here to make an incredible white pizza at home, but you really gotta nail down the right toppings. You gotta get the right combinations of cheeses. White pizza is an art and I figured the best way to learn that art is to just take a tour right here in Brooklyn, one of the best pizza destinations in the world. There's a lot of great spots right around the studio. So I'm gonna hit up a few pizza joints to sample their white pizza, but before that, I figured I'd get the dough started. All right, listen to me very clearly. It is extremely easy to make pizza dough from scratch. It's only four ingredients. We've got water, we've got flour, salt, and yeast. You can add honey, you can add olive oil, but we're gonna keep it very simple. This is my overnight pizza dough recipe. It's been tested, it's been improved, it's been honed in over the last year of quarantine. Just follow my lead and everything will be all right. So I'm gonna be using a scale because we're using baker's percentages, but it's not mandatory. The entire recipe is written below in the blog post. I'm gonna start off with 700 and 50 grams of flour. 700 of those grams will be all purpose flour. You can use bread flour if you want. And then the last 50 of those grams will be whole wheat just for a little extra flavor. 750. Now, when it comes to the hydration percentage of your dough or the percent of water compared to your total flour, there's three main options for pizza. You've got 60%, 65%, and 70%. The lower your percentage, the easier it will be to work your dough, but the less fluffy your dough will be. As you go up in percentage, it's gonna be a wetter dough, a little more difficult to work, but the fluffier, air bubblier <laughs> your dough will get. I'm gonna go right smack dab in the middle at 65% for this dough. So all I have to do is 750, times 0.65 or 65%, 487 grams is the amount of water I need. Right, a little over, but that's all right. Now your salt percentage is usually around 2% of 750, 15 grams. And salt at 15 grams. And finally, we have yeast. This is instant yeast right here. And what I found is the best way to increase the flavor of your pizza dough is to extend the fermentation time. And the easiest way to do that is to lower the amount of yeast. You don't need to dump in a full yeast packet into your pizza dough. This stuff is powerful. So I'm actually gonna measure this out rather than using a scale because yeast is very light and sometimes it doesn't read on a scale. And I'm using just a half teaspoon of yeast going in. Boop. So I'll just give this a rough mix and we'll start kneading. So I just kneaded for a second there and the dough is a bit sticky right now to the surface and I don't wanna add too much flour. So what I'll do is I'll just cover it with a wet towel, come back to it in like five minutes. Let some of that gluten bonding just naturally start to happen. already so much smoother. So this is the furthest I'm gonna go with the kneading. You can see it's smoother. It's still sticking a little bit, but if you take a closer look, there's still these little pockets here. It's not completely smooth like a baby's booty. So back again with the towel, I'll let that sit for about 10 more minutes and I'll show you a really cool transformation. All right, now watch this very closely bench scraper, it will stick. We slowly start to just shape this. Do you see how a little bit of resting time just completely transformed that dough? Now that's a baby's butt right there. Now we've got this beautiful dough ball right here and we're entering into the bulk ferment where this doubles in size. And the easiest way to track that is a container like this where you can see the actual volume increasing. I'm gonna hit it with some olive oil and plop. Now with that small amount of yeast, my goal was to increase flavor but also to give me enough time to do this pizza tour. So I'm guessing this doubling in size will be about four to five hours which is plenty of time to get inspired. 
Now it is looking slightly sketchy right now with this storm coming in. Let's hope for the best. I've done a good bit of research trying to pinpoint the best white pizza in the area. So I plan to loop around South Brooklyn with the goal of hitting at least three pizza joints, maybe more. It is starting to rain as I speak. And the first place I can hit by foot, it's about 15 minutes away. It's called F and F Pizzeria. This place opened up about a year ago by the same owners as the popular Frankie's 457, who also have their own olive oil that pops up in my videos from time to time. They had a few different varieties of white pizza, but the Bartana slice looked the most intriguing to me, and it turned out to be an excellent pick. This slice reminded me of the white pizza that I grew up on. Pretty light on the cheese with just a base of moths, but the tang and bite from the charred red onions with the kick from the Calabrian chilies was the perfect match. Just a really well executed executed slice of white pizza. So I gotta say, I'm feeling pretty good after that slice. It was nice and light and I appreciate that. A really good way to start the pizza tour. So that was Carroll Gardens. I'm headed about 10 minutes by foot to Gowanus, back close to my studio, to a place called Public Display of Affection. I've been there before. They have incredible pizza, but I've never tried their white pizza. So this place had just one baseline white pizza, but you could customize it with whatever toppings you wanted. So I went with the shiitake mushrooms since I've never had them on a pizza before. And this was a three cheese pizza with ricotta, pecorino, and mozz. So a really cheese focused white pizza with just excellent technique. And of course that extra flavor boost from that smoky wood fire. One of my favorite touches to this pizza was the little zest of lemon that was added right when this thing came bubbling out of the oven. It paired perfectly with the richness of the cheese and it's just those little tiny elements that can really change the pizza eating experience. Another great white pizza, completely different style, much more reliant on that cheese combination, but I am seeing a theme building here. When you take away the power of the tomato sauce, you gotta rely a little bit more on these flavor enhancements, those shiitake bombs or the lemon zest, little adjustments to make that flavor pop. So it's officially raining, but I'm headed over to another place called Pizza Secret. It's about 10 minutes away in Park Slope, and I've never had any of their food, but apparently they make an incredible white pizza. No, Rosario Valle, I'm from Napoli, uh, Italy. Uh, third generation of Pizzaiolo. I'm here in, Bru in Brooklyn. I opened my uh, pizzeria three years ago, Pizza Secrets. And uh, we share the secret of Neapolitan pizza. That's it. I chose the Chaccio e Pepe pizza, taking inspiration from the Italian cheese and pepper pasta. And this was another heavy cheese focused pizza with a base of pecorino, parmesan, then some shredded mozz topped with some chunks of buffalo mozzarella. But the cheese party wasn't over just yet. When this thing came bubbling out of the oven, it was topped with some creamy ricotta and finally the cracked pepper and the fresh basil leaves. This pizza was definitely on the heavier side of the cheese spectrum for white pizzas, but it was absolutely absolutely loaded with cheesy flavor goodness. And that cracked pepper with the basil leaves was another nice little touch to just refine the overall pizza. So I've got one more place left on the white pizza tour that's essential, but I'm headed back to the studio real quick to take care of this mop on my head right now. So lucky for me, the studio right here, which is actually connect, I share a wall with this studio. He happens to cut hair. <laughs> there he is. All right, I'm a new man. Ken, you've done good. Thanks, What's sir. your salon called again? By Ophelia. All right, studio yes. next door. Studio next door. Yeah, thank you. All right, fresh cut, and I'm back on the street for the final stop on this food tour right here in Fort Greene, which is an awesome neighborhood, but also the home of Emily's Pizza. Now this place has been blowing up over the last few years. They have multiple spots all over the city, but this original spot I've never been to. And I was able to order ahead because I know exactly what I need to try, which is their signature pizza, a white pizza called the Emily Pizza, named after the owner. All right, so 
it's officially clear. If you wanna make a really good white pizza, you can't just rely on some cheese and some standard toppings. You need that little something extra. In this case with Emily's, the pistachios and that little drizzle of honey, fantastic. Takes it to the next level. Really good pizza. I'm certainly inspired. I feel like I got a great sort of variety of white pizzas. It's back to the studio now to check in on that fermentation process. Hopefully we doubled in size over this pizza tour and we're in good shape to form some dough balls. All right, let's see where we're at with this ferment. Oh, yes. Talk about on point, my friends. Five hours and 22 minutes later, we have a perfect doubling in size. I'm gonna cut pieces and I'm looking for around 250 grams each. It's close enough. That's the perfect size for my pizza maker, but you know, do whatever you want. Got a little bit of semolina. You can use regular flour. One, two, three, four, five. Semolina plastic. So that worked out great. Five perfect 250 gram pizzas with that dough recipe. Now, like I mentioned before, longer fermentation equals more flavor. And in this case, the way I'm going to slow things down a bit is let these proof in the fridge overnight. It slows down the yeast production, but that bacteria production keeps on going. And I'll see all of you tomorrow in my outdoor studio to cook up these pizzas. All right, welcome back. It's finally time to make some pizzas. I'm making two white pizzas tonight. The first one's gonna be an original white pizza, a flavor combination that I've been tinkering with over the last few weeks. The second one's inspired by the Emily pizza. Well, more of an exact replication. I feel like since I got that pizza takeout, I didn't get the best experience since it was just a little old. So I wanna taste those flavor combinations super fresh coming out of this oven. So tonight I'm working with with the Uni Fira, and Uni's actually the sponsor of today's video, which is awesome because I'm obsessed with this pizza oven for a few reasons. Number one is this thing is small and it's portable. Everything folds up, everything comes apart. So you can take this to the park or you could take it camping or just move it around in your backyard. And number two is it's super energy efficient. It runs off wood pellets and it only takes a few handfuls of pellets to cook around two to three pizzas, not to mention it gets up to 950 degrees Fahrenheit, which is plenty of heat. And also it heats up in 15 minutes. I don't wanna be waiting an hour or two hours for my pizza oven to come to temperature. And finally, I love this thing because it's just fun. The flavor in the char you get from the actual fire is really unmatched unless you have a full on pizza oven. But a big pizza oven is not very realistic for most people, but you know it is? this thing right here. So if you're interested in checking out the Uni Fira or any of the other ovens Uni offers, just check out the link below in the description. So I've really been liking this fine semolina to roll out the pizza. It's a little less of a mess. And it's like 100 degrees outside right now, which is just awful conditions for pizza making. So we'll see what happens here. That over. Look at that bubble. That's insane. That's going to burn in the oven. So I'm just going to pop it. Semolina on here, slide that right on. I'm gonna start this one off with a base of creamy, very creamy ricotta and just spread that on as the bottom layer. Now I made this beautiful pesto today with garlic scapes, a ton of herbs, pistachios, lemon zest, Parmesan and olive oil. I'm gonna just spot this around the pizza. Now I'll go on with some fresh mozzarella. I've got some caramelized onions and mushrooms right here. I'm just gonna sprinkle those on and that's ready to go. Had some trouble getting that off because it's so hot. Just gonna give that a turn. Rotate it. So that was a bit of a disaster. First pizza is always, you know, never the best. But I bet it will taste good. Solid bubs in the crust. Let's see if we can improve that on the next round. 
Mm. Flavor, incredible. Wow. Wow. Just need a little redemption on the technique. I'm gonna go pull a dough from the fridge. Hopefully that will work out better for this Emily pie. So I'm gonna start this one with a little truffle oil on the base. And I've got a truffle cheese here. See those truffles? Let me go on with the mozz. Pistachios. I like the idea of putting a little honey on now so it caramelizes in the oven. You can do a little after too. That looks incredible. Give it a rotate. Looking good. Look at this thing. Oh my God. I do think I'm gonna just drizzle a little bit of the fresh honey on top. Look at that crumb structure. Here we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> that is memorable. That is memorable right there. Incredible. When you come up with a combination like that, it deserves to be the name of the restaurant. All right, the fifth and final pizza. Boom, that was awesome. I hope you learned a few things about white pizza. I certainly did. There's nothing better than actually getting out there, testing these things, learning from the pros themselves, so you can then come home and perfect it yourself like a true pro home cook. Thanks again to Uni for sponsoring this video, and I will see you very soon.